the best meteor shower of the year is finally here. Betelgeuse might disappear from the night sky. You can spot an astronaut's lost tool bag. We have the cold full moon on Boxing Day and Jupiter ends its retrograde motion. Welcome back to another episode of What's in the Night Sky for December 2023. And before we deep dive into this month's night sky, it's your last chance to grab a 2024 What's in the Night Sky calendar before Christmas. They make great Christmas gifts. And I only have about 100 left now. Once they're gone, they're gone. I'm not doing another print run. So follow the link in the video description down below. We ship worldwide, but if you're in the EU, you need to order from my eBay store instead. So starting with a general look at the Northern Hemisphere night sky, and as darkness falls, you can still enjoy the dark dust lane of the Great Rift and the fuzzy bright Cygnus region of the Milky Way in the West. As I explained in another video, Milky Way season is never over. You can also still enjoy Ursa Major, the Big Bear, low on the northern horizon in the evening, but as the night goes on, it climbs higher into the northeast. But the real gems of the winter night sky can be found in the east, in the asterism known as the Winter Circle. An asterism is a well-known pattern in the stars that isn't one of the official constellations, and the Winter Circle, or Winter Hexagon, is made up of six of the brightest stars in the night sky from different constellations. So there's Procyon of Canis Minor, Pollux of Gemini, Capella of Riga, Aldebaran of Taurus, Rigel of Orion, and the last to rise, the brightest star in the night sky, Sirius. There's also a faint strip of the Milky Way band running through the middle of the circle, so if you're in a dark rural area, you should be able to see and capture that. But the bright stars that I mentioned can be seen from even the heaviest light polluted cities. This jewel encrusted area starts the night in the east, but crosses high over the south as the night goes on. In the Southern Hemisphere, where it's summer, the Winter Circle is known as the Southern Summer Circle. They can also be found in the East as darkness falls, but they will arch much higher and over the Northern sky from right to left. Also, in the late evening, it's a good time to bag a Milky Way arch panorama facing East. You'll have the Southern Summer Circle on the left in the North, and some Southern Hemisphere constellations like Vela, Carina, and the Crux on the right in the South. This region of the Milky Way in the south is also worth capturing on its own, as it's rather bright and fuzzy and it's encrusted with the brightest stars in the southern hemisphere and night sky. Then we have the highlight of the month with the best meteor shower of the year, the Geminids. And this year, there is only a 2% one day old crescent moon, which will set shortly after sunset, leaving the skies dark all night, so conditions couldn't really be any better, assuming there's no clouds where you are. And this is great news because the Geminids is one of the meteor showers which actually has high rates of meteors before midnight as well as in the pre-dawn hours. The shower is active from November the 19th to December the 24th, but activity really ramps up on the nights either side of the peak which is expected to fall on December the 14th this year at roughly 19.30 in universal time. During the peak, with the moon out of the way, if you're in a completely dark rural area, you can possibly see up to 100 meteors per hour. If you're in the southern hemisphere though, you should expect much lower rates than that. The radiant point is within the constellation Gemini, which starts the night in the east and climbs to its highest point in the sky around 2am local time. But remember, you don't need to look in the direction of the radiant point. So long as it's above the horizon, meteors will fall all over the sky. But if you trace a line backwards along the meteor's path, they all point to the same point in the night sky, which is found in the constellation Gemini. Gemini meteors tend to be bright, bold and white, and they can be a real feast for the eyes. So long story short, make sure you're out under dark, clear skies on the night of the 13th and 14th and any other night in the week either side of the peak. Now, some pretty unique news in Wittens. If you've heard the phrase finding a needle in a haystack, how about spotting an astronaut's toolkit in space from Earth? Surprisingly, it might be easier than finding the needle. On the 1st of November, NASA astronauts Jasmine Mogbilly and Laurel O'Hara misplaced a toolbox which floated away during a maintenance spacewalk on the International Space Station. The toolbox is now in orbit around Earth and is surprisingly bright with some putting it at magnitude 6, which puts it at the limit of naked eye visibility if you're in a dark sky location. Otherwise, you can spot it with some binoculars or a small telescope. 
It's in front of the space station, following the same path, and the latest estimates put it around 22 minutes ahead of the ISS. So use an app like ISS Detector to see if there are any ISS passes in your location soon, and head out half an hour to 40 minutes earlier to see if you can spot the tool bag following the same path as the ISS. Ideally, you need the pass to be during twilight so that it's brightly illuminated by the sun and shining against the dark sky backdrop. Estimates say it's going to orbit Earth for a few months and probably going to burn up in Earth's atmosphere around March in 2024. In further unique news, Betelgeuse is set to fade and might even disappear altogether. And no, this is not some clickbait about it going supernova in a hundred thousand years or whatever. However, in order to see this event, you do need to be on a very specific path on Earth. So on December the 11th or the 12th, depending on your location, observers along a narrow path in southern Europe and across the Atlantic Ocean into the Bahamas, southern Florida and parts of Mexico will be able to see Betelgeuse become fainter and it might even disappear altogether, but only for several seconds. Asteroid Leona will pass in front of the famous red supergiant star of Orion the Hunter, temporarily blocking some of its light, so Betelgeuse will look dimmed or extinguished for up to 7 seconds. I'll put some links in the video description below with maps etc so you can find out more about this event. And it's funny that Betelgeuse is already notorious for its dimming and brightening as it is a variable star, but this time it will be Asteroid Leona's fault. As for the planets this month, Saturn can be found in Aquarius, shining at a modest magnitude of 0.9. For those in the Northern Hemisphere, it starts the night in the South and sinks into the West. And for those in the Southern Hemisphere, it can be found high overhead as darkness falls and also sinks down to the West. Jupiter continues to shine brightly this month, it's in the constellation Aries. It follows Saturn across the sky, so it starts the night in the Southeast, arches across the South for those in the Northern Hemisphere, or climbs high overhead in the northern skies for those in the southern hemisphere. It ends the year by ending its retrograde motion on the 30th. Venus can be found rising in the east in the pre-dawn hours, shining at a blazingly bright minus 4.1. It's joined by a thin crescent moon on the 9th. Full moon this month falls on the 26th, the day after Christmas, which is celebrated as Boxing Day in many Commonwealth countries. This full moon is known as the Cold Moon, although there's no prizes for guessing why. There are prizes, however, for our monthly Witten's Photography winners, so let's check those out. For those of you that are new here, every month I set a target subject or theme for people to photograph for a chance to win a prize. If you submit it via Twitter or X, whatever it's called, use the hashtag Witten's on your post, but if you're uploading to Instagram, please add a tag on your image for at Witten's underscore Alan Wallace. It's not enough to just add a mention in the description of the post, it has to be a tag on the image. Anyway, third place wins a copy of my Astro Workflow Lightroom presets, second place wins a 2024 What's in the Night Sky calendar, and first place wins a copy of my book Photographing the Night Sky. Last month's theme was the Great Rift, a part of the Milky Way that's left above the horizon now that the Milky Way core season has finished, and here are the winners. In third place was Luke with this beautiful image of an old castle ruins in Scotland. I loved the simplicity, the natural edit, and also how the Great Rift, which is a dark dust lane blocking the Milky Way from view, is somewhat blocked itself by some local cloud, which is causing a nice bloat on the bright stars of the Summer Triangle asterism. Very nicely done. In second place was Patrick with another old stone building, this time in Hungary. I loved the composition, the colours in this image are great. That warm yellow light emanating from the building is so inviting in what looks like an otherwise cold night. Really like the edited on this, nice and sharp and clean. And in first place was Lucas with this stunning image from the Czech Republic. I loved the different textures from the scree rocks in the foreground to the soft trees in the midground. There's just layers upon layers in this image creating so much depth and they all just fold into one another. I also love how the clouds acted as a frame for the Great Rift, even as leading lines pointing towards it. Very beautifully composed and very beautifully edited image, so congratulations. This month it has to be the Geminid Meteor Shower. Don't miss it guys, start doing your clear sky dances now. So what are you most looking forward to this month? Let me know in the comments down below. 
Don't forget to follow my new page on Instagram at Wittens underscore Alan Wallace. Hit subscribe if you haven't already and check out this astro vlog of the Geminid Meteor Shower if you haven't already. And hopefully I'll have a new one for you this year. As always, if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies.